Uh, hello, this is Paul Verholic, and this is the second in a series of, of videos on the particle editing system within uh, the World Rider. Um, this next iteration actually adds a few new features. Specifically, um, when we import a particle system or add a particle system now, we can actually create different types of emitters or add it as a different type of emitter. Let me go ahead and get started and just uh, I'll start narrating as we go along. So. <clears throat> I've got a couple of existing uh, particle systems created, um, fire and smoke, and so let me create one that's uh, based off of the fire particle system. If I look at this, this is just a pretty simple little system that's got <clears throat> uh, minimum size of, uh, and start and start and stop sizes here are all the same. And I did that intentionally because I just want to show the the various em emitters. When I when I build that and I click on Add to Scene now you can add not only as a point emitter but now with a time emitter, sphere emitter, uh, box emitter and a quad emitter. Let me explain what each of these are. With the point emitter, the point emitter is, is very simple. It has a, a continuous emission. It says particles per, per second, um, 100 particles per second. I can enable it or I can disable it. With a, a timed emitter, now I have uh, an, an interval, so this is in milliseconds as well. If I have an interval, let's say maybe uh, 10 milliseconds, and I want to emit one every 10 milliseconds, then uh, let me actually give these some, some some interest here, so we can see a little bit about what this is going to do. <clears throat> so what this is doing now is just you know emitting um, at uh, you know horizontal velocity. Let me just add a little bit of horizontal velocity to give some interest to this little this little uh, fire plume. Uh, so this is a time emitter. It says, hey, I want um, to emit n number of particles at, at this interval. And the changes that I've made just there, uh, I can actually save those back to the content item. Those will actually be saved back to uh, the particle system. Now when I look at it, I can actually see things like its uh, minimum uh, and maximum uh, uh, vertical and horizontal velocities that I've modified. So <clears throat> let me delete this guy out and and uh, show a little bit uh, uh, some some additional stuff here. Since I changed that, I have to rebuild it. I'm going to add it as a sphere emitter, and this is kind of cool. Let me change the the particle system back to where uh, it originally was with no uh, velocity, so you can see what the sphere it really looks like. <clears throat> so I'm going to set its uh, velocities back to zero. And now if I, uh, I'm also going to change something here so that at first it just, it just emits on the surface of the sphere only. So <clears throat> here I'm going to set my interval down a little bit lower and I'll create maybe 10, uh, 10 particles. So that's actually a sphere, the, the, the size of this window um, sets the, uh, the aspect ratio so it, it'll look like a, it actually is a sphere, it may look a little oblong here when it's, uh, when the, the aspect ratio is, is a little off. Or the <clears throat> so anyhow, that is the, the sphere emitter. It's just uh, these little fire particles emitting on the surface of the sphere. If I change that surface only flag to false, then it'll emit all throughout the sphere. Okay, Just randomly selecting uh, uh, a uh, altitude in an azimuth within the circle, uh, within the sphere, uh, and then a random distance between the origin and the, the radius. So I can change things like the, the, the radius of the sphere. Let me change it. I can make it a much bigger sphere or a much smaller sphere. And that's it. You know, I'm, I'm emitting from within a sphere. Now, obviously, if I added uh, some sort of gravity that, that pulled everything down, th this is just a, a static uh, example. But you know, I can make this a, a very interesting uh, particle emission system just by adding a couple of little bit of, uh, of, of uh, rotation or velocity effects in there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, is just change the altitude. If I don't want a full circle, maybe I only want a half a circle, then uh, I'll change this to uh, just pi instead of 2 pi. And now you can see, and I'm still emitting just on the surface of the sphere, but now it's just, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a hemisphere. And likewise with the azimuth, I can actually cut down the azimuth, so now this is only going to be a, uh, a quarter of a sphere, and let's say I do uh, two, pi, 2 pi all right, we're going to see, you know, just that an edge or the section of the sphere being rendered um, because of the uh, the azimuth, and that's pretty cool. So we can actually get uh, altitude and azimuth. You specify, and it will randomly select their minimums and maximums. So <clears throat> I want the 
full sphere again. Uh, here we go. Now both of them are two pi, and it will render uh, an entire circle. So if I only want one half or the other half, it, it, I can do some, some min and max uh, altitudes. Okay, so that's the sphere system. Uh, I can also render within a quad, uh, so or pardon me, within a box. So with the box emitter, let me jack this up a little bit. <clears throat> uh, the box emitter is an axis aligned bounding box, and uh, likewise, I, I can I can do a surface only, and I can emit just on the edge of the box. Right now, that's off, so I'm emitting inside of the box as well. Uh, let me change this a little bit. Last a little longer, and I'll change this to uh, surface only, and now it'll emit just on the surface of the box. I'm really just having these stay static, all the particles stay static, just so that you can see that it's actually, you know, generating on the uh, within this uh, the sphere or box. Uh, but obviously, this is just a way for us to create volume um, and, and emit within a volume instead of just emitting out of a single point. Um, last piece that I want to show here, I can do uh, the size of the box. The way that the size works, the size is based off of the. Uh, um, uh, the radius of a bounding sphere. So it, if I say the size is 10, then that's the 10 units is the radius of the bounding sphere that the box gets created out of. So it, that box then can contain a bounding sphere uh, with a radius of 10, and its position uh, I can move around and say, all right, well, I want you to be, you know, you know, 40, and uh, you're up in the sky. Okay. So that is a bounding volume or bounding uh, bounding box box emitter. The last one I want to show you is the quad emitter, and the quad emitter um, just emits out of a quad. Okay, so here um, let me change this again so that my interval is a little bit lower and my particles per interval are a bit higher. Set my max settings a little bit higher as well. My max particles, 2,000 particles, and <clears throat> all this is doing then is it's emitting off of the surface of, the, of, a, of a quad. So I can change the, the, the direction that the quad is facing, um, forward, backwards, left, right. You know, back, uh, left and right, of course, is just the orientation. And it's it's going to look identical. It's just where is the, what's the normal? Where is it actually facing? And you know, up or down. So here, if I wanted to, to make it look like it was raining a little bit, or this is raining fire, um, let me put this up in the up in the sky a little bit, and I can change uh, its width. So if I don't want it to be just a, a square quad, um, I can change its width and its height. So the height is uh, right now the height is 60 and the width is 60. But if I want the you know the height to be half that, you know, then I can just emit out of this sliver. When I emit out of just that slice, <clears throat> then I can make it you know let me actually make it look like a, a sheet. So this will change. I'll add some gravity so that the gravity pulls down those particles, and it'll pull down those particles uh, evenly. So that the way that gravity works here is that it's not like an attractor or a repeller. Gravity is a universal uh, effect, which is good. That's what we want. We want it to to, uh, to be universal. Change some settings here, make it look interesting. So now we're emitting from a quad, and since that quad is not fixed as a as a as just a, a square, it can be you know a, a rectangle, then that can actually make it look like a, a sheet of smoke or a sheet of fire or something coming down.